the shop. Today, I want to talk about the Flightline Spitfire, 1600 millimeter. It's a big plane. But first, there's just something magical about the Spitfire. Um, I always loved the Spitfire. The wing, the profile of the wing, just the, the history of it. Amazing pilots like Douglas Botter um, through the Battle of Britain. Amazing history around it. I, I highly recommend checking some of that stuff out because it is pretty incredible. As far as this plane goes, this, this flight line Spitfire is probably the best, maybe, okay, maybe not the best, but it's, it's a phenomenal uh, warbird, flies amazing. Everything about this plane is fantastic. I've had it a while, and to be honest, there were a couple things I had to get used to on it that I wasn't, I wasn't ready for. Ah, stalled it. So I kind of want to talk about that, uh, just go through the whole rundown of some of the things I've learned about this plane. So I did an entire build modification and initial maidens uh, video. You can go ahead and check that out to get kind of the, the, the pre-info on this plane. Um, go ahead and watch that. So as I said, I've flown it a while and I've worked out some of the kinks that I was having with it. My setup page is here. All the information, the throws, the battery type, um, you know, the CG, everything is now how I have it set up, uh, which might be a little different than how I initially set it up. Field setup is a snap. You know, here I'm going through the video on just setting this thing up. It's uh, five screws, uh, connect the wing, as far as with uh, the connectors, not a big deal going to go through the process of attaching the wing. Normally, this is what I do at the field. Show up, got my stand, pop the top. Also, I have ready my three millimeter hex driver. All the parts are inside the battery compartment. I always have a baggie full of screws and extra screws. And course, cannons go in there as well. Now everything's out of there. So now what I'm going to do is flip this over. Be careful not to smash that on your stand. <clears throat> Pull this back just ever so slightly. All right. Now grab the wing. And I got a bundle of wires here. I got to make sure that those go forward into where I can then grab them in a minute. I want to make sure I don't get all the, any wires outside of where they need to go so they don't get pinched. The way this sits in, it kind of just sits straight down. It doesn't like rock in where the front goes in first or anything. It's a little fiddly about that. Now I attach the wing with said screws. Good news is they're all the same size. There's four of them. Oh, sorry about that camera. Hope we can see this on the camera. All right. Put those in. On this a few times. And that's it. Now that part's done. I'm going to flip it back because I need to connect. All right, now we have the setup is everything is marked pretty well. If you look at my build video when I put this thing together, I kind of go through what I do on this. This is the bundle that came in from the wing and everything is marked. So there is the connector for pretty simple and non-confusing. <laughs> you just match up the dots, three dots, three dots. Once those are done, that's it. You're done. Battery wise, I'll show you what I do with my battery. 
I use these big Liperior 65C. I like them because they weigh a lot. They weigh 886 grams. And by putting this in the middle here, gives me the right center of gravity for this guy. Uh, I've gone through this, you know, center of gravity, pushing it back and forth and such. And then, of course, make myself a little note on the, the battery and where, middle of the tray, also the weight of the battery. Because keep in mind, I've got 5,000 milliamp batteries that weigh a lot less than that. And that would create a bit of a tail heavy situation if I don't use these batteries. So just something to note, here's how I'm set up for the field, ready to roll. Now you're ready to fly it. I will say that this plane here will challenge you as a tail dragger takeoff. You cannot just gun this plane and expect it to go down the center of the runway. It will veer left quite a bit. Whoa. So I did a whole video on taking, uh, taking off tra tail draggers because I see it all the time, especially on this plane. You gun that, you know, that motor, it's going to shoot left. It's going to go into the grass. It's going to flip over and shred the prop up or damage something else. So highly recommend you have some skills on taking off tail draggers before you try this guy. So for me though, it's pretty simple now, right? Um, no flap and I plant the elevator. What I mean by that is I give full up elevator as I start my initial rollout. As I build up speed, I release that elevator to neutral, not too much, because this thing will have a tendency to nose over and shred your prop. So keep an eye on that as you're rolling, doing your rollout. I'm also feeding in right rudder as I'm rolling out, sometimes quite a bit, you know, to get that smooth, nice tail up, down the center runway kind of look. Andy. Don't need 100% throttle just gunning it off the get-go. This plane has huge wings. It's light enough. It will take off, you know, with, you know, three-quarter throttle. You don't need to go crazy on the power. Flying, she flies easy. I mean, really. I mean, if you're, you know, if there is nothing spectacular or, or terrifying about how she flies. Big plane, flies smooth, flies great. For a while, I was flying her without a gyro. Uh, I have uh, gyro in there. Um, I'll put in, you know, in my setup page, my gains, but pretty uneventful. Um, she doesn't really need it, but that's the receiver I had. I decided to turn it on. Now the tough part, for me at least, landings. Now, landings on this thing, because that narrow gear, she'll flip over and scrape up a wing super fast. Good news is, flight line put on, I don't know if you can see them there, plastic, hard plastic on the tips of the wings. So as you will with this narrow, <laughs> narrow landing gear, you're gonna scrape up those wings. But there's a couple of things you can do as you're learning to land this plane and get those nice, beautiful scale landings. One is I don't use full flap. 
I do need to slow her down a little bit. So I do have half lap on it. Oh. Um, also, I'm running enough power, but I'm not, not, not full power and definitely you cannot cut throttle. Too slow, saw it come. You know, on this thing and just, just drop her in like an apprentice or a, you know, ranger. Not going to happen. You're going to have a real problem with it. Oleo struts are great, and I've tested them well during the, kind of perfecting my landings. So <clears throat> keep a little speed up, and you are going to need to do some practice drills on that speed. What is that speed? That old, you know, the drill I like to do, don't touch down. You just go right over the runway, modulating the speed, but not touching down yet, and that'll help you. A little bit more, a little less, a lot more. Now, once you figure that out, now you touch down, do not chop the throttle. Let this thing settle in, let her settle, and then start slowing her down by pulling back on that throttle. At the same time as she's slowing down, plant that elevator, giving full up elevator as soon as you can to get the tail wheel on the ground. Once she's done that, and you wait a couple seconds for her to settle, she's, she's good. Stick that tail down. Don't try to turn her real quickly though. I'll tell you that, she will bite your, well, she'll bash, you know, basically scrape up a wingtip. If you have to, run off the runway. These wheels on this thing are huge. You know, it's not going to be a problem. If you're going a little fast, she will flip over and smash up your tail. I put a carbon fiber rod in it uh, to help prevent any further damage that I already caused. Oh, you bouncing. No! So, all of those types of things, you know, as far as running down, and here's a whole bunch of landing videos that I've done. Uh, and narrate it through that process. I'm not in no hurry though. Nope. A little too high. <laughs> Came in pretty fast and <clears throat> started feeding in a little elevator. And all right, let's see if I can get another good landing. Slowing her down. Slowing her down. Boy, she lands great now. Once you figure her out, it's just an amazing flying plane. So the next thing, storage travel. Um, I, in many videos you've seen, she's behind me. Her fuselage is uh, vertically up against the wall here. The wings, I keep the wing halves connected. Um, not a big deal, um, I, but, they're, but they're tall. I mean, there's not a lot. These big planes are hard to store, uh, but that's how I store it. Uh, travel, same kind of thing. Not a big deal. Fits in the back of my truck. So that's easy. Set up at the field. Like I said, five screws connecting uh, some K, um, all the uh, electronics and she's good to go. Who is this plane for? So if you have utmost confidence in your takeoff and landings of tail draggers, if you struggle with your you know, 1.2 uh, meter P51 or P47 or something like that. If you're struggling and you shoot off to the left and you're having a hard time taking off straight and smooth, this plane's not for you yet, right? The, the, I do not practice on this. The props are very expensive. And when you start shredding them, it's a little disappointing. How are you on landings? Can you line up on the runway well? Can you modulate the throttle? 
Are you at that point in your skill set where you can kind of modulate that throttle and watch the plane? What does she need? A little elevator, a little less elevator, a little more throttle, and so on and so forth. If you're there, this plane's for you. Now, the flying part of this is simple. This plane is just a great, great flyer. I highly recommend the plane. Anyway, hope you enjoyed you know, all the parts of this video. Uh, of course, if you have a question, leave a comment. Uh, like, subscribe, all the cool stuff. It makes me feel good about doing these videos. Have a great day.